welcome to Lifestyles of the Strange and Exotic, where I shall be showing you in macro. Da, da, da. Now, as you see my lovely background, which doesn't seem to be focusing. I don't know. Is there like an arrow? I don't know. So I'm not quite sure what precisely you'll be seeing. I am on my itty bitty teeny tiny. Uh, 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 might help a little bit. My teeny tiny tripod. Uh, ooh, finger puppets. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I shall be showing you my collection of sharp pointy objects. And I shall start with huh? this one. <laughs> As you see my lovely Vanna hands. Now I tried doing this on the uh, flip cam, but it went blurry the moment you went up here. This doesn't. So, so but it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> uh, or dagger. Oh. That um, this wants to take great close-ups, but you can't get really far away. Which is kind of annoying. This little piece came from Germany, Deutschland, and it's something my father picked up a very, very long time ago when he was in Germany in the army, I think. Uh, I do not know why he was in Germany. <clears throat> oh, can you see my camera? Ooh, da -da 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 -da. And this, I, the entire dagger was, well, I call it a dagger, it is actually a letter opener. It was most likely covered in the um, gold plating here, which is most likely not gold. <laughs> Otherwise, it might not have worn off. And I actually kind of sort of nicked this from the living room 15 years ago. Because <laughs> for some weird reason, I felt I needed some extra protection in Pennsylvania, which was totally unnecessary. But for someone like me... I needed the extra bling, and we all know how girls like shiny things. So I grabbed this. And nobody seems to have missed it, because in 15 years nobody has asked where it was been, even though it's been probably displayed <laughs> in plain sight, so it's not like, where'd it go? Now, I like this pretty filigree kind of upside-down shield thingy. <laughs> I guess you consider it upside-down, because a shield is normally faced in this direction. And it's fairly well made. It's sturdy, it's not flimsy, and the joinings where the pieces put together aren't, you know, slipping any, they're not loose. Kind of kind of looks like a chess piece. So there, it's a very nice, nice piece. And this is a wood handle. And again, you know, like a chess piece. It's, it's very pretty, I thought it was very lovely. And it stays shiny, and it has its, the whole, the, that, the, well, I shall refer to these shiny things as daggers. Now, the difference between a letter opener, a knife, and a dagger, I suppose, it depends what you do with it. Has This particular has like a flimsy um, sheath, which doesn't really, <laughs> you know. <laughs> this deserves better than what it has for a sheath. So that is this pretty item. Bye-bye. Now, when I go to Renaissance fairs, I like collecting sharp pointy objects, but as of late, they are really ugly and kind of expensive, so I have not added to this lovely collection. So these are within, you know, the past 15, 20 years. Maybe even 30, who knows. Now, this one comes in a case that looks like this, and I'm assuming Dart is the company that puts this particular one out. And this is actually you know, a nice belt knife. It has a loop here that you can stick it on your belt. I have done so on occasion. Because <laughs> I'll be packing, yo. And to extract the knife, it opens up like that and it tucks underneath there. Nothing special, just a canvas. You know, do flicky. But the dagger, I thought was really kind of nifty. It was really pretty. Come, come, come. And it's almost, it's almost shaped like Sting from Lord of the Rings. Though, 
at the time, Lord of the Rings hadn't even been you know, put out into the theaters yet, so... <laughs> and yes, these are sharp. These are not dull knives. And I love the filigree on this, and I like the shape, too, how it's, how it is that sort of not stereotypical shape. And the design is on both sides. And the neat thing about this one, as I try not to cut myself, it's the pretty lady. And she is on both sides. Uh, and the artwork is really nice. I mean, I think she'd make a good tattoo, and maybe a tattoo artist designed her. So I thought it was really kind of, kind of cool for, you know, it's my chick knife. And this is nothing special. I think it's just a, it's a plastic. And this isn't a sticker. Well, no, maybe it is. Let me get a closer look. Nope, it's just sort of, you know, it's not really a decal, and it's not quite painted on, but the, the you know, she can be easily scratched off, as you can see, kind of here. <laughs> well, I thought she was pretty. She's just very, very pretty, you know, she looks like she could, you know, be with the elves, you know, an elf quest, and maybe a go-back, you know. <laughs> um, there's no, um, none of these really have any marks of, you know, Ooh, yes it does. Made in China, which most of these things are. So, <laughs> nothing fancy here. Ooh, I know another one I can show you. Okay, so that's that one. Back into you, there thing she goes. Now, this is one that I kind of have to laugh about, because I think it's broken, but the story they gave me was really kind of funny. And this, where are you? There you are. Had a nice, like, Chinese knot. I don't know if there's a special name in it. Where it had, like, four loops. I know there's a name for the knot, but over the years it's gotten <laughs> unpleasantly knotted. And the tassels are kind of... <clears throat> but, this is the sheath and the knife. And it's very Roman-esque. And this is that pretty, you know, this isn't a light knife at all. Now, the tr trick with this one is, uh, see if I can, yeah, now I won't do it right. Uh, there, uh, there we go, okay. Didn't, you know, try to open it. This comes off. This would be kind of awkward during battle. <laughs> Oops, here, you want the end of my, um, you know, knife here? So, so you really can't hang it up, otherwise it comes off. So I'm like, well, it was kind of cheap, and I'm like, well, it's broken. No, they go. This is the way it was designed. They used to put poison in this particular thing. Here's my question. If you got a knife, why are you going to waste time with poison? <laughs> Would you just stab them? So I thought the, the, the story was funny. I, I didn't buy into it at all. I'm like, yeah, uh-huh, sure. It's like, wouldn't it be a little more secure, you know? But I, I don't know. The story kind of bought it, you know. It was funny. And the and the knife again made in China, and these are all just stainless steel, nothing particularly special. It's very similar to the first knife I showed you. And the I'm trying to figure out knife slips in there, so it's a very ornate um, sheath. But uh, yeah, we'll poison you and then stab you to death as you are being poisoned. So it, it just kind of reminded me of like a gladius, you know, one of those type of knives and daggers. Nothing particularly special as far as the design. But I just thought it was kind of funny, so you can't really hang it up, otherwise it falls off. Not like I found that out the hard way or anything. Mm -hmm. Off you go. Back. The next one I got. Now I like, like I said, getting one kind of every year, but didn't quite work out that way. So this did not come from the Connecticut Renaissance Fair, which all but the German one and the one I'll show you in a bit did. This came from, you know, the old Chinese shop. And I had only noticed recently that there's a little skull in there. And a very mean vampire monkey, it seems, that has an issue with this guy. Um, I don't know if that's a dude there or not. You know, kind of passed out on passed out on this guy's back. Is that a face? I don't know. 
and that's a dragon. And this one is actually set up to sit up. This is the hilt of the dife, which is a you know a dragon here with some pretty you know an, an interesting design element. So you can almost see the scales. There's nothing set in there. It's just recessed. That would be neat if it had like um you know even the fake gems. And there's your dragon. But it's neat that it's made to sit up, so it's like its own display. And it's the same on both sides. And this is one of the more chintzier ones I have. Oops. Oh, we're experiencing technical difficulties. Okay. So this is, again, nothing special about the actual blade. But it has this nice curved feature. It's a little wider than I think some of my other blades. This is more more of a a knife than like a letter opener blade. It's much wider, but it's a uh, you know not the highest quality. It's a little loose. It's mostly just for display. I mean, you could you know open an envelope with this, but you know this wouldn't be you know up to too much wear and tear. It's just to look at. And this I think I paid ten dollars for a few years ago. Where are you? There you go. No depth perception through camera. <laughs> there you go. Just slides in like that. Da -da -da. And I try to kind of limit myself to maybe ten, fifteen dollars per knife. <laughs> so, but there was one that was like a knife and a. It's like a double bladed knife, and it was like twenty two dollars, and I just that much, and I'm like, I don't think I want to pay twenty two dollars for a knife. So, alas, I did not buy that. And that was this past year. I might have made that into the uh, vlog, I think. Now, these are two of my favorite knives. And this one's the most practical of the knives. Hmm. I might have to break for a battery change. And this, I actually didn't get at the Renaissance Fair. I did see it there, and it was kind of expensive. But then they had an outlet at the mall that had this. <laughs> One of those weird, obscure malls we don't go to anymore. And I'm like, must have. And this is the one when I go to the Renaissance Fair I usually wear because I like the belt. This is where you put your belt through. But actually, it might actually have a specific loop on a belt specifically made for a knife. But, you know, if I have a small enough belt, I can actually do that. And again, this had the same hmm, buzz. <sighs> same type of nodding as the other one. And you can tell I've had this a while since this used to be red. <laughs> now it is not quite. And this isn't leather, it's like a faux leather. Even the sphere here. Which has nice detailing on it here. And kind of this crown. Oh, I forgot a magnet. It's like... Crown, crown molding, I don't know. That's shaped like a crown. And this is the base of the knife. Going into the sheath. And I like the fact that you don't even have to pull the knife to be dangerous because it's got a sharp pointy thing even on the sheath. So, <laughs> which I thought was quite practical. You know, in case you get, you know, hammered by zombies or something, you got something to work with. So that is the sheath. I'm trying to pull it without knocking things off. Do it. Please pause for station identification. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program. I eat battery change. Okay. It's kind of awkward to pull these out while I'm hugging a camera here. Now this is the blade. And this is a good 18 inches long. Again, nothing particularly fascinating about the styling of the blade. It's just a simple one inch blade that tapers down. And again, comes from our favorite place in all the world, China! So stainless steel, which is nice, it doesn't rust or anything like that, so there's no real upkeep as far as, you know, keeping your blades rust free. <laughs> they do sell, like, things you can keep your blades, you know, shiny and stuff like that. So this, this one is kind of my favorite one. I probably put in a few pictures, you know, showing you the actual blade, not just pieces of it. So again, sharp. <sighs> And then it just slides in 
like that. I have like no room. And it's snug without being impossible. It's just I'm at an awkward angle here. So it doesn't. So you can hang it up by these even and display it on your wall. Where are you? There you are. So you can have like one here and then display it out. And it won't, the sheath won't fall off, which would be kind of, you know, awkward <laughs> and embarrassing if you are a knife welder. So that is that one. Okay. And this one is just really freaking cool. And I, I've seen a few of these since with different designs, but this one's still by far the best one. Is that not flipping cool? Now she's just a, um, I would think more like a queen than a god, because she's n there's no identifying like leaf or anything on her head other than the serpent and the vulture here that isn't really a serpent and a vulture it's just sort of <laughs> they look like worms I don't know but she's got the crook and flail of the pharaoh so this could be considered my hat at knife and that's her front and then she has a normal back with the kind of an interesting feature pretty dress and the winged scarab design here so I try not to knock it was awesome this is the cross you know, the cross hilt there, that technical term I escapes me, but this is how you hold it on. Uh, and the scarab, and that's the same on both sides. So from that point down, it is the same. And you have the neat um, lotus. Must be time for my union break. I have a fuzzball now trying to help. And I'm pretty sure these don't, I mean, the hieroglyphs themselves are accurate hieroglyphs, but I don't think they spell out anything, you know. <laughs> you know, this end up, you know, in hieroglyph. I could try translating it, I just never gotten around to that. And again, the lotus pattern on the bottom. The coolest part of this blade, though, if I can actually show you with fuzzy creatures, is the actual blade itself. Need a 2001 theme here. It's what I would kind of consider a serpent blade, where it is not a straight blade but a wavy one. Again, sharp, pointy tail with the button away, and it tapers down. See, I don't know if you can catch that. It's a very a modest wave, but enough to just make it that just. It is awesome. So the entire personality of this blade is just really, really nifty. How about if I aim in the opposite direction here? Uh, there we go. That'd be a little, a little easier for you to see there. I'm gonna for a little butt munch. <laughs> hey, you're the one who wanted to help. So that is my uh, and I think there's like a piece of plastic Michael, kind of at this from this point down because there's very little give when you put it back in the sheath from here up and then it kind of gets tighter down which is kind of neat so it's a nice that's one of the things I test too when I you know, pick up something like this, the, the security of the sheath, that it doesn't just easily fall off like the stupid camera's doing because there's this in the way now. <sighs> this is why I think, this is why my quality videos are so quality. So, <sighs> so that is that one. And I shall return with the final knife. I lied, I have an extra one. This one is sort of my go-to when I need to get a package open knife here. <laughs> and this, I think, came from my mother-in-law for Christmas many a year ago. Which, obviously, <laughs> since it's Zale Jr.'s number 8 and he's now 88 for the past five years or so. And I have his father's one, too. The number 3. And this is neat. It's a good, easy knife. You know, it's got your little clip here. And you pull this out, and it goes like that. 
And this is this always comes in handy when you're like shopping and you have to get the tag off, which sounds so wrong, but you know, you know the electronics you don't want to wait to get home, you know. Or you want to. Usually for me it's like jewelry. I'm like, well, I bought it. I want to wear it now, you know. And I'm in the car trying to you know operate the battery and the <laughs> watches, which I'm again on the hunt for. So it's a good sort of um, Swiss Army knife thing without having a Swiss Army knife. Which I do have, or did have many a year ago. But this, you know, does what I have, I have to do. Again, with like a letter opener, just general. Basically, you know, ins instead of having like scissors or something, I have this. Nothing special. Here. And the final thing. I actually got... I would take those out of front. You are a pain in my butt. This I actually got at Haven, which was a goth club. And the story was they were trying to make money for like their cat surgery. And this was only five dollars. Was it five? Was it five? I think so. It was like this pittance, basically. And I, oh, and it, it came in like a leather pouch. Not really a pouch, but kind of like a belt purse, which I'd misplaced somewhere. I think I'd used it at the Ren Fair for just sort of, you know, something to keep little odds and ends in. So it was a, a neat buy. And this is from some sort of artist. I think I looked them up. And these were from. Oh, the Franklin Mint. Do they even make stuff anymore? And it has just a little purple gem on the top. You know, just plastic, nothing special. And it's Gandalf. <laughs> which I thought was cool. If it's not Gandalf on the bridge of Casa Dune, I don't know who it is. Uh, and this is this on the back. Oh, wait, hold on. You flickered. <laughs> Franklin Mint Collector Knives. And then I, I think this is worth maybe, what, $25 or something like that. It's nothing, you know, it's not like the Fabergé of knives. But the thing is, it's kind of a difficult thing to kind of open up, and I can't remember how to... Where are you? Ah, okay. It's one of those things you kind of have to do with a cat butt in the way here. Urgh. I'll get back to you. This is the knife you need a knife to open the knife with. Because it's very, it's very, very tight in the thing, and nobody's fingernails are that strong. Okay, just, just saying. So the blade is very similar to my other blade. Again, stainless china. This is the lovely camera I'm filming on. That's the fuzzy butt in the way. So this is working out lovely. And it's a very, you know, neat blade. And it tells you it is Gandalf. Which is a copyright thing. I don't know. But I thought that was kind of cool. Now, as far as markings, uh, this is just nothing special. There's no, it's not like real gold or anything like that, I don't think. You know, it doesn't say. You know, this isn't, like, engraved in 24 karat or anything like that, you know? <laughs> so. And they had, like, Bilbo. So this came out during the first Lord of the Rings, I think. And there's, like, a series of them. But I thought that was kind of nifty. And I keep that in, like, the living room displayed. But it would be nice if it would, like, open easier than... And... It looks like that on the inside where the blade folds in. There we go. So, so Gandalf thanks you for watching. He's smiling under that beard. You know he is. He also asks you to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I shall see you all next time. And you like.